I want to document in a multi-part series the process of converting this old apple tree into a multi-graft. Um, this is a tree, I actually documented it in one of the more recent videos that I did where I'm talking about pruning apple trees in the late winter and providing brush and tops to uh, focus fertility of rabbits and deer in certain areas. And I alluded to in that video the idea that maybe I want to convert this tree over to multiple uh, cultivar trees. The main reason, a couple reasons being, number one, this tree over the 10 years of uh, harvesting crops from it, it's not uh, incredibly productive and it makes an apple that is on the smaller side, it's kind of red, tends to be mealy, not that amazing, and it also fruits relatively early. And I know some people really love early fruiting apples. I personally would prefer to get apples that come later. I like to harvest things when it's colder. Uh, I have more time. <laughs> and so my idea uh, partially is that and uh, partially the basic form of this tree. It obviously is a well-established tree in the earth here and it has an interesting trunk pattern that I think would lend itself to translating into a number of different trees. So if I were to pollard this or cut this, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, I'd have six different really potent points on which I can graft. And what I will do though, I learned this from my good friend Akiva, who runs a nursery down in Spencer, New York, Twisted Tree, that what some people will do is they'll cut these and then they'll cleft graft into the bark with small scion wood. That may work well for some folks. What he recommends, and I've tried this and it works really nicely, is you cut it and then for a season, you allow it to send up new shoots of its own wood and select for one or two really vigorous, healthy, appropriately placed shoots uh, this season. So for 2018, we'll facilitate that and uh, select down for one or two really beautiful shoots per stump, let's say, and then next spring, so around this time or a little later when the buds begin to swell, I'll be able to go through and graft that over with a standard whip and tongue or a mini cleft graft, uh, which has a much better chance of taking and the scion wood will be on a more appropriately sized uh, rootstock wood. So I'm going to go through with the electric chainsaw and cut this back and we'll talk about it a little bit more. I had to pause here on the time lapse because this last stem, I kind of have to aim pretty much directly where the camera was. So let me cut that and then we'll talk about it. Certainly a little raw looking for now, but I will say this, uh, deciduous trees, especially apple trees, when they are completely dormant, which they are right now, the ground is still frozen. You can hear it underfoot. There's snow on the ground. Uh, all of, well, the vast majority of the life force and energy of this being is down in the earth. And when it wakes up this spring, it should put forth some absolutely monstrous new growth from these cuts. Now, I used a chainsaw, but what I used was a, a battery-powered electric chainsaw with a very skinny chain. I'm not necessarily promoting these folks. I was able to borrow this for long term, but this is a steel. It's like 500 bucks for this thing. I don't know that I would buy it, but it is pretty amazing. 
But the important part is the chain on this is very, very thin, and I've got it nice and sharp, and so it leaves a cut that is quite clean. And beyond that, you'll notice every one of my cuts is set in a way where it's pitched away from the center of the tree. So rain can shunt away, snow can melt away, rather than focusing that water and mildew back into the center. And as it re-sprouts, I'm going to thin out material that sprouts on the interior to keep it nice and open. We're going to leave it here for now because basically um, now we let it grow again for this season and focus it a little bit. I'll probably document a bit as I do the initial uh, light management on it throughout this season. And then we certainly will document it when we get it worked over to upwards to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine separate varieties of apples. The other thing about this now, a couple things. One, I'm going to contact my good friend Liam, who does uh, amazing bowl turning and spoon making and all that, and have him come out with a little lightweight saw and harvest from this as much. I mean, there's a lot of beautiful bowls and cups and tons of spoons and all sorts of craft to be extracted from these branches. Then there's some firewood and then the tip wood I can lay out to feed deer or rabbits and I can then turn into charcoal. So there's a lot of additional yield coming out of this, not to mention the fact that now there's a massive amount more light available in this glade. So this spring, as this is regrowing, my plan is to come around it, put in companion plants, uh, garlic, lemon balm, anise hyssop, sweet sicily, maybe some Turkish rockets to grow around it as nutrient accumulators, some comfrey, some rhubarb, and create a whole guild around this. And to the north of it, start planting out things like currants and raspberries, gooseberries, um, thornless blackberries, maybe even a Nanking cherry or two, since now there's all this excess room, or not excess, beautiful, uh, nutrient and light available because of this canopy release. So potentially lots of value here. I have an ethical responsibility to take care of this being now that I've really changed its course. But looking at its growth rings, I can see the last 10-15 years have been pretty stagnant growth for it. So hopefully this is really invigorating and a chance for it to become nine separate trees next year. The next order of business is for me to tidy up this big old beauty it makes apples that I love, so I'm not trying to graft it over, but I want to clean up the crown and open it up a little bit. But that's for another video. Thank you so much for watching, and look forward to showing you updates as it evolves. Now it's time to clean up this whole craziness and think through what to do with it. Probably the, the lamest thing I could do is just say, ah, send it all in a chipper. There's a lot of good figuring to be done here.